Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. I'm going to talk about the perspective of the narcissist, how they think different and why certain things that we say to them either go over their head or they're not affected by. So I have a couple examples. Um, I'm going to start out with the way that they think because they do think different. I have a narcissistic neighbor. I told you guys about that. And he had asked for some money and I'm kind of getting a little sick of giving him money. He's really good about paying back, but it's like, I don't want to make it a habit. So um, he had, uh, he saw me drive by and I was going to the gas station. He shouts out, get me a pack of smokes. And I didn't. And so then he gets pissed off and uh, he ended up coming home. He was at a neighbor's and he like flips me off. And uh, so I said, thanks for flipping me off. And he's like, haha, and sends all this like love, like, you know, uh, but a person who would be in a healthier state of mind would be like, oh, I'm sorry. I, you know, I didn't mean it. I was just joking or whatever. But Usually they wouldn't even do that. But when you call them a certain name, which is reactive abuse sometimes, or it can be abusive if things have calmed down and you attack them. But if you call them a certain name, let's say uh, you tell them they're an asshole, they kind of feel it. So it's not going to hit hard with them. Just like if you called me a blonde, it's like, okay, <laughs> like so. Um, but if it somewhat resonates with them, as a truth, it's not going to hurt as much because that's who they are. Now, this is where it gets tricky is because you're close to them. So if you're having a one-on-one, -on -one, let's say you call them a thief. Let's say they stole a lot. Some narcissists do that. They feel entitled to things. So they're a thief and you're calling them a thief. They're like, okay, you know, I steal. It's not going to hit hard. It's not going to change them. Like, whoa, I don't want to be called that now there's grandiose and then there's vulnerable so your grandiose if you call them that out in public they will turn it around and be proud of it like man I yeah I got away with this or whatever they might feed into it um sometimes they don't um now a narcissist can go between grandiose and vulnerable so a vulnerable one is protecting their ego as well but in a different way and they're going to uh and sometimes that grandiose will flip into the vulnerable so they're going to be pissed at you that you call them out they don't like to be called out so even if it is a truth it doesn't resonate when they're with you but it resonates with the outside people so when you're having your discussions with them you don't make any headway and they don't reflect with you and it's kind of crazy that the person that they're closest to it doesn't resonate with them so you can say whatever thinking that they're going to change just like saying you know don't flip me off uh it's like what they, they come they, they don't think in the way of whoa whoa i shouldn't have, i shouldn't have done that it was kind of rude they're like whatever like because they're used to that kind of treatment they're used to um either being told to shut up or flipped off or beat or whatever they went through that it's become ingrained in them and that's what they're going to spew out i do find it interesting how it's a shift in females becoming more narcissistic and we're also having a shift in gender roles and also allowing our children um some of us to um kind of change gender type uh viewpoints and you know when girls in the traditional old-fashioned sense were raised we cried a lot we uh got hugs we got uh talk it out what are you feeling as opposed to the boys who were kind of shut down emotionally so there were uh gender roles and we're, we're starting to change that so the shift is changing and as you see the balance of narcissistic versus um how it's raising that society is trying to shift things um and it's causing a, a change that's going on um we're also coddling the boys more and uh they're becoming softer so maybe they're eventually uh, i don't know if they're dropping off or just the change in a rise in females so i i got to do some research on the change if men are dropping off and becoming less narcissistic overall but whatever we go through in life affects us every little thing and so perspective 
is going to affect our healing. And I had a viewer who had some problems with his phone and pretty much all of his YouTube videos were deleted except a couple special ones. So he's, um, I read his text and my interpretation of it is he's pretty upset. Now it takes a lot of work to do YouTube channels and upload and all these things. So, um, he's lost a lot of things. I don't think he uploaded them. Otherwise they'd be saved. Um, but he's, you know, we can look at things like, why are, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Or we can look at it as what's the lesson in this, you know? So, uh, for him, maybe it would have been, Hey, uh, save back up your important stuff so you don't have to worry about losing it because things do happen maybe this is you know he related it to god and maybe god or life is telling him you know this could cause some catastrophic loss in the future that i'm trying to prevent you from losing uh so we can be thankful he did have some very important videos saved so he can either go through life with this why is this happening to me everything is down on me and poor me or i'm blessed that i have at least some of this and what is the lesson so with our narcissist you know maybe it was a lesson that we give people too much grace sometimes, or we need to change our communication, whether it was um, us adding fuel to the fire. Uh, it's hard in a narcissistic relationship because regular relationships can go bad and you can usually kind of pinpoint what happened. Um, but a narcissistic relationship is built on lies. And that's why we get stuck in rumination and trying to figure things out because there were so many lies. We had a distorted reality. And the more we gave, the less we were as a person. And, you know, we got caught up in the cycle and it gets really confusing with all the love bombing and like, okay, we're past this point and then we're not past this point. And why does the narcissist do this? And are they going to come back and the Hoovers and reverse discards and everything that goes on? It's very confusing. Um, but if you look at their upbringing and, you know, with, um, when I get frustrated, I cry. I cry. I was uh, raised fairly well, fairly well, but I was, you know, kind of my dad uh, didn't know how to handle these girl emotions, these teenage girl emotions, and, you know, kind of told me to squash it, you know, in a sense. Um, fantastic, fantastic father, but I needed to cry or I needed to talk about it. And, you know, so now I, I struggle with that you know, because um, I need to talk about it. And so I uh, reached out too much that maybe if I could have learned to express my feelings in a different way that I wouldn't have like had panic attacks or whatever it was that uh, just communicate with me. I had pressures of the court system to communicate, all these kind of things. I grew up fairly naive. I was very sheltered uh, to the point I was safe, but I was sheltered too much in my opinion. Um, so perspective, you know, I can be mad at my parents for sheltering me too much, which I kind of am. <laughs> Um, or I can change it. I can change it that there's a whole world out there and they did the best they could. And, and I am, uh, a very kind person. Uh, I try to understand things. Um, I think I tried to understand things because I wasn't exposed to a lot of things. Every little thing makes up who we are. So would I be on this channel if my childhood was different? So I do want to say I had a fairly good childhood, but things changed too when I was eight years old. Uh, basically, uh, not really religious family at all. And then when I was eight, my dad found God and got really strict. So it was a change in my life. I wasn't allowed to go to G-rated movies and just everything was super strict. And 
you know, uh, always had to be the good girl is what I felt like. And, you know, it affects me. You know, was I a people pleaser? Did I feel, you know, with the birth order? You know, I have an older brother, two younger sisters. All these things affect who we are, how we interact. But what I have learned through psychology, if you, and I just saw this uh, post about seduction isn't about beauty. It's about psychology. And, you know, if I'm sitting here, fuck this, fuck that, you're an ass. What the fuck, you loser people just need to come here and see me. Um, or if I was like, it's so good to see you and I hope you're doing good, comment below if I can help you. That uh, the way somebody interacts, the way they're perceived. So when, you know, when I get, let's say, uh, a text from you guys, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for having you at this channel and I want to help you. I could do it the other way where I'm annoyed with you. I just want to do the videos for views, for money, for whatever, that how we look at things is going to change how we act. And, you know, um, that viewer who was upset about what they lost. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense to be upset that we lost something, but what were we supposed to learn from it? What were we supposed to learn about from the discard or the divorce or whatever you, happened or our parents, if they were narcissistic, what did we learn? A lot of times we resort to what we grew up with. And when we go through uh, becoming a parent, as opposed to the child, you know, um, in the beginning, uh, we try not to do what our parents did. And during times of stress, a lot of times you can go back to how your parents treated you, that you take on their role. So hopefully you weren't in a terrible situation and, and have these like resort to moments because your mind just does a shift. If you can look at the psychology of it, and I would like you guys to please let me know, comment below that, would you like to know more about psychology or just narcissism? Because there's a lot of comorbidities that can help explain your person and possibly they might be misdiagnosed, like uh, pseudo-diagnosed, we'll call it that, pseudo-diagnosed because, you know, we see certain traits, they lie. Are they just a liar or are they uh, malicious and ill intent? Um, there's there's that spectrum of narcissism. Some of them truly don't understand what they've done. And some of them truly use it to manipulate. And I think psychology is extremely important in understanding people, but understanding ourselves as well. And like I told him, you can take it down that path of this sucks and get depressed, or you can take it as I'm blessed. I need to back up and uh, take that lesson. If you take that lesson, you're like, I'm blessed. When you're blessed and if you uh, realize, I told for him to uh, the dedication, maybe it's this test of your dedication. You know, like right now, if I don't get any views on this video, am I just going to say, screw it, I give up? Or am I going to tell myself I need to do better? You know, I could screw it or I need to do better. There's a lesson in it. So life is full of lessons and perspective matters. And we have control over the perspective of our life. But takes mindfulness to shift the human mind likes to go negative going negative is easier going negative is easier it's easier for me uh to let my weight go or uh, to be unkempt or it's easier to just say screw it i'm not going to college or trade school or finding a job it's easier for me to say fuck it all guys are assholes um it's just easier but is it better? So choose the path, whatever it is, that betters you. And that's going to change your life. So I will do more videos for you guys about dopamine, about how to shift to a healthier state 
it's uh, I saw it was by AA where it's not easy, but it's simple. And we have to heed advice. Um, I let a lot of advice go. And you guys might be in that state that you would like to let this go. I'm not taking that advice. I can't wait for her to talk about, you know, is he going to come back or she or uh, understanding certain little things. But don't forget about yourself in this healing process. Because a lot of times, a lot of us come to these channels. How do I win them back? Um, we forget about the lesson. And... We have to learn to let things go. And that's hard. That's hard for me. That, you know, to not take it personally. You know, if somebody broke in my house right now, that's pretty narcissistic. They break in my house, steal everything. They don't even know me. People abuse people sometimes that they don't even know. And, you know, we can play the victim. Or we can build ourselves back up. Maybe, you know, maybe that means we need to change our locks. Maybe that means we need to stop posting as much on Facebook. Maybe this, maybe that. It's supposed to be a lesson. It's a lesson. And sometimes certain lessons are hard. So I'm here. I'm a teacher. I teach kids all day. And it's up to the kids to learn what they can from me. So... Moving forward, if something resonates with you, really think about the depth of it. Um, because like I said, I let a lot of good advice go by because I thought I knew. I didn't apply the psychology to it. And the psychology helps understand the human mind. It's really interesting how uh, developmentally certain things are milestones and human behavior we uh, have a tendency to go back to what's comfortable we have a tendency to a lot of us when we move away we move back uh, isn't always the case but a lot of times that happens I've done that myself I hate Michigan and I've moved to different places South Carolina Florida this and that um grass isn't always easier on the other side so be careful with with that kind of stuff too so moving forward perspective you are worth it you're worth loving yourself and not letting your person put your value your value on you it sucks what we went through and the worst part is they will only love us if we're perfect. No human being on this planet is perfect. So give yourself some grace that they expected too much from you. They expected it without return. You could have given them everything they wanted, but you needed, you know, it's just like I can be the greatest uh, teacher. But I need to be able to have a car to get to work. I need to be able to have a shower to show up at least showered once a week or something. Uh, this, that, whatever. I shower more than that. But if you're not going to compensate me, that's not a selfish thing. It's not selfish for me to say, I will be there. I just need my basic needs met. So with our narcissist, our basic needs weren't met. So unfortunately, we kind of show up to the relationship a little disheveled because we're exhausted now and we're tired and we're confused and maybe we're getting depressed and maybe we aren't keeping up with ourselves that we are meant to shine and asking for a hug when you're sad or a little um, compassion uh, it, it's so sad how the lies distort everything in the gaslighting. So believe in yourself that we're going to get past this. Let me know what I can do for you to help you. And I will try to brainstorm uh, proactively some things that you would need. If you guys would like healing 
information, please let me know that. I'm kind of at a transition in my channel. Um, I can go on and on about narcissism all day. But I know a lot of us need, need to heal. So I hope a healthy balance will be good for you. So one-on-ones are available. I am a certified life coach and I'm here to help you guys. One-on-ones are available. Hope to see you in live chat and I'll talk to you soon.